Dave O here from the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located in Des Moines, Iowa. Inside the lovely skin kitchen and coming up next, how to heal a nipple piercing. Yes, aftercare instructions for female and male nipples. So stick around. One thing I always like to point out whenever I do one of these videos is that, kind of a disclaimer, I'm recording this in October of 2018. If you've gotten conflicting ideas or viewpoints from your piercer or even myself, please consult them before you switch out. New information is always coming available. People have different ideas on what works and what doesn't work. This is what I've found to work best. If your piercer is giving you entirely different instructions, talk to them and find out why they think it should be done differently. First off, shopping list. Some things you need to pick up. Sea salt, which you can find in the baked goods aisle of any good grocery store. Distilled water, which you can find in the beverage aisle. Sometimes they'll hide it next to the infant care section. Uh, and sometimes if you're in a large department store, it might be next to the appliances. Soap. Basically, you want a fragrance-free and moisturizer-free antimicrobial germicidal soap. Now, your best bet is to go to the pharmacy or a, depart or a drug store and buy Proven or Satin. That is my number one suggestion. If you cannot find that or you're in an area where it's difficult to find that, you can find it online at Amazon, usually stocks it, at least Proven. Or um, you can go with a mild antibacterial liquid soap. Probably the most common or easy to find is Dial Gold antibacterial. Um, it'll be usually next to all the other hand soaps. But as I stated before, your best bet is to go with Proven or Satin. Plenty of clean paper towels. You are going to be using them throughout the healing period. It's a good idea to have them on hand. It gives you a source of something to pat the piercing dry after cleaning it or doing, com or doing soaks. Um, so it's a nice thing to have. Disposable cups. You want the medicine cup size cups, those kind of plat, and you do want plastic, don't buy the paper ones, they don't work very well. For the soaks, you can reuse a glass over and over again, however, you do want to be very, very diligent with cleaning it immediately after you use it. If you're lazy like me, it's easier to buy the disposable cups and then just toss them after you're done. Soaks. To do soaks, you take a cup of the distilled water. When I say cup, I mean a measured cup, eight ounces. Put it in the microwave, heat it up by the same period of time you would if you were warming up coffee or cocoa. You don't want this boiling hot, you want it comfortably warm. Kind of think, uh, kind of the same temperature as a warm bath. Drop in an eighth of a teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, let it dissolve, should taste about as salty as your own tears. Then, transfer it into that disposable medicine cup, bend over at the waist, Press the rim of the glass against the area, rock backwards and let it soak for roughly about 10 minutes, twice daily, throughout the healing period. What that helps to do is it helps to draw waste and debris from the piercing, increase the circulation and the flow of oxygen to the piercing. Uh, the warmth helps with that. Uh, there's minerals and nutrients that are in the salt that can help uh, speed up the healing process and it really helps to soothe it. Piercings, no matter how well you take care of them, can go through kind of grumpy phases where they're sore and tender for no apparent reason, no matter how well you take care of them. And this is one of those things that's gonna make you feel better. The other part you do in the shower. Uh, first off, take care of all your normal baby duties first. Just in case you get some hair products or something on them, you can, on the piercing, you can rinse it off right away. Then, uh, spray the, wash your hands, of course. Spray the water directly onto the piercing area. Uh, squirt out a uh, pearl drop of the soap. Doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. Lather it up well so you're diluting it. You don't want to put on their full strength. It's too harsh. Apply it to the piercing area. Let it stay in contact for roughly about 30 seconds, which is equivalent to singing Happy Birthday or Merry Had a Little Lamb twice. If you don't want to sing in the shower, recite the Pre Pledge of Allegiance twice. Then rinse under running water. As soon as you get out of the shower, pat it dry with a clean paper towel. Now you want to do both those, the, con the soaks and the cleaning in the shower, 
for at least the next six months or until you stop seeing that discharge collecting and depositing on the jewelry and the piercing holes will get kind of an ingrown or indented look to it. Whenever in doubt of whether or not the piercing is healed, stop by your piercing studio or stop by my studio, have me take a look. I'll be happy to make that decision for you. You don't need to start any of this until the day after the piercing has been done. Um, you kind of want to give it a night to kind of relax and get back to somewhat normalcy before you start doing the soaks and the cleaning in the shower. If there's dry blood in the area or marker or something you want to clean off a little bit of warm water and soap, that shouldn't be an issue. Cross-contamination prevention. Common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. Try to handle it by the ends or the ball, depending on what type of jewelry you have. The only time you really have any contact with the piercing is when you're cleaning it and when you're checking, if you have barbells, checking the ends to make sure those balls are on there tight. They can't come unscrewed uh, just from normal contact with clothing and etc. They usually fall off at the worst possible time or even if you could get the jewelry back, you're not necessarily going to want to put it back in there after where it landed. Um, you don't need to get out pliers, you don't need to buy Loctite, you just need to check them on a regular basis. Make sure that your hands are well washed before you do it, um, to get not only because you want to be clean, but to get the, the oil off of your fingertips to give you a little bit better grip. Uh, another thing you can do is wearing gloves, uh, latex gloves will give you a little bit better grip, even the other type if they're textured on the tips will give you a better grip to get it on there tighter. Keep everybody's germy little fingers away from it. Understand that microorganisms like bacteria and other pathogens do move on the surface of your skin. So anytime you touch the area, you want to wash your hands before you do so. At some point in your life, you might have been told to spin, rotate, or move jewelry during the healing process. There is absolutely no reason to do that. There's no benefit to it. The piercing is not going to become permanently affixed. The jewelry can be removed regardless of if you move it or not. What it tends to do is cause damage to the piercing. It increases the likelihood of infection by overhandling the jewelry and possibly breaking loose new skin growth. So it will move naturally on its own, regardless of what you do, just thanks to gold fashion gravity. Anything beyond that is completely unnecessary. With nipple piercings, they tend to tighten and loosen drastically during the healing process. If you come across a situation where the piercing doesn't seem to want to move at all, never force the jewelry through the piercing. You can dislodge the skin growth and prolong your healing period by possibly even starting over. I had one client that was so diligent about rotating that jewelry that he completely inverted and pulled out the entire piercing tunnel. So if you do need to adjust it or move it, always do it right after you clean it in the shower. Make sure your hands are well washed and if there's any resistance at all, do not move it. Give it a couple days or a couple week or a week or so, and it should loosen up again and be easier to move. Also, if there's any pain involved, don't move it. No oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on near around the piercing until the piercing is healed. That does include your own saliva. I've never understood why people think it's safe to lick fingers and clean things, but don't do that. It's disgusting, and your saliva is full of bacteria. Keep your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it. Uh, way to get around constantly changing your sheets is put on a clean shirt or night shirt before you go to bed just to be on the safe side. Keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. They're just going to take every contaminant in the house and put it into your nice clean bedding. Do not Submerge the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. So no swimming, no hot tubbing, no swimming in the lake, no bathing, other than your own clean bathtub. How can you help your piercing heal? A couple things you can do is be healthy. Eat a well-balanced diet, a nutritional diet, get plenty of rest, reduce the amount of stress in your life. The other thing is avoid situations of abuse. Avoid clothing that's constrictive, abrasive, or blocks the flow of oxygen in the piercing. A good rule of thumb is if it hurts to wear something or it hurts to do something, do not do it. It is not uncommon to have a little bit of tightness up in this area, the upper area of the pet, after the piercing has been done. So if you're exercising and it hurts to do something, kind of hold off for a little while. 
Avoid sleeping on the piercings. Make sure you're sleeping on your side or your back. Women, you may find it most comfortable to wear a sports bra, men's A shirt, or tank top. Even when you're sleeping, the jostling around you doing your sleep can cause it to be just uncomfortable and possibly cause some abuse. So listen to your body. Everybody's shaped differently. Find something that has kind of even support and isn't painful or adding pressure to the piercing. Jewelry. Leave that piece in until it heals. After it heals, you can take it out and replace another piece. However, you do want to leave something in it at all times for roughly the next two to three years, only taking it out to replace. With nipple piercings, it is not uncommon to have that piercing for a long period of time. Remove it for a surgery or doctor's appointment or for whatever reason and have issues getting it back in after maybe a day or two. If you like the piercing, you definitely want to leave something in it. I never charge shade jewelry, regardless of where it comes from. All sort of thermotic clave and sterilize it as long as proper size, metal proper material, and it's appropriate for that particular piercing. That's the case with most piercers that I know that are reputable, especially if you buy the jewelry from them. They have no issue sterilizing it and changing the jewelry for you. In fact, for the first year or so, I encourage that because sometimes it can be a little tricky to change that jewelry. Jewelry types. You want to avoid anything that has any sharp edges, points, things dangling off of it, or it seems extremely heavy. All those things are going to cause discomfort and can cause issues even in a healed piercing. If you do decide that you want to wear rings, you want to keep the diameter wide enough that the area that's in the piercing is flat as possible. If you put in a new piece of jewelry and it wants to stick straight out, that's a sign that the ring is way too small. Generally, uh, with nipples, usually diameter-wise, you want something that's at least 5 eighths of an inch in diameter if it's circular. I usually suggest either rings or barbells. With the barbells, you want them tight enough that they fit, but loose enough to allow for the uh, expansion and, and contraction that the nipple has. I always tell people, think of it kind of like jeans. You want them tight enough that they fit well and don't fall down, but you want them loose enough that you can breathe. Nipple shields. This is one of those things that goes in and out of vogue on a regular basis. Uh, when there was the wardrobe malfunction, at the Super Bowl with Janet Jackson, it seemed like suddenly everybody wanted nipple shields, like they didn't understand what they were. What nipple shields are is generally a piece of metal that sits behind the piercing, which means that it puts pressure on the piercing outward. You usually put the disc behind the, behind the piercing and then insert the jewelry in. It can cause problems with a healing piercing, especially, but even after the healing is over, to cause it to put so much pressure on it that it migrates. So you really need to consult that with your piercer before you do put on that type of jewelry. As always, if you see something, you're not quite sure if it's going to work or not, don't hesitate to contact me or your piercer. Um, we're happy to give advice. We'd much rather have you buy a good piece of jewelry than something that is going to cause damage to the piercing or cause you issues. Also, if you go to my website, I list four different places that I suggest buying jewelry online. And the reason why I like those places is they list the manufacturer next to the jewelry. So you know where it came from, who made it, what the quality of the jewelry is, and what it's actually in fact made out of. Opposed to going to the mall, department store, FC, Amazon, where you have no idea where they're buying this stuff in bulk. And I doubt anybody that works there has a clue either. Infections, very infrequent. Some the cream sub doesn't seem right to you. Get in contact with your piercer immediately or seek professional medical advice. Two worst things you can do if you think you have an infection. Put off getting taken care of because it's just going to get worse, possibly turn systematic and spread. It'd be much more difficult to correct the longer you put off getting taken care of. The other thing is removing the jewelry. A lot of people have this misconception that if you remove the jewelry, everything's going to just magically go back to normal. The problem with that thinking is how your body heals infections and what happens when you take the jewelry out. Your body heals infections by pushing infected tissue and fluids out through the wounds while replacing them with healthy tissue below. When you remove the jewelry, which is often the only key thing keeping those two holes open, they can close, possibly trapping that infected tissue and fluids 
inside your body, and often with a, with a puncture wound like what a piercing is, it can be very deep inside the body and trigger one or two events. Worst case scenario, it turns into an inward traveling infection, begins to actually spread into other tissue. If left untreated, it could possibly turn septic or cause permanent tissue damage. The worst case scenario is that it causes a milk duct infection, which I have had women describe as the female version of gout. Not a fun experience to say the least. The other thing that it will possibly do, and more commonly do, is isolate the infected tissue and fluids by creating a cyst or an abscess, and then slowly and very painfully pushing it to the surface. Both cases, you're definitely going to need medical treatment, and it's probably going to involve having it lanced and drained. If you leave the jewelry in, it allows that way for your body to expel the infection, and it also usually makes it a little bit more treatable. Now, it's never going to be uncommon to see some signs of infection, um, like redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness of the touch, inflammation, off and on from anywhere from the first couple days to a couple weeks. Uh, basically, as your body gets over the trauma of the piercing and starts to accept the jewelry. It's also not uncommon to see a tad bit of bleeding anywhere from a couple days to five days. Most people don't even notice it. It usually is kind of collects around the piercing holes. Um, yeah, I don't even need to bother with it. So that's the basics. So let's go over some things. Six months to a year healing time. Doing hot soaks in the shower twice daily for 10 minutes. Cleaning twice daily in the shower with an antimicrobial or germicidal soap. Cross-contamination prevention. And baby it and be healthy. I think that covers pretty much the main parts of it. If you have any questions or feel like I missed something, please make a comment. I love interacting with those that have watched this. I hope that you've learned something today. The goal of these is educating the general public um, and including my own clientele. It's always been a part of piercing to me. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more, please subscribe. Also, always enjoy a thumbs up. Other than that, have a good day, and we'll see you for your piercing needs in the future.